Hi, my name is Steve Rahi. I am a Premier Field Engineer specializing in management technologies. Today's discussion is part seven of a series focusing on Config Manager Current Branch and the Microsoft Cloud, Azure. Today's discussion will be focused on the Cloud Management Gateway. And I've been looking forward to getting to this particular discussion because there's, you know, there's a lot of really cool things that we can do between Config Manager and Azure. We've talked about uh, six parts of them already, right? Part seven today. This one is uh, really exciting to me because as I think through all of the other options and places that we integrate between Config Manager and Azure, this one to me rises to the top as being the most compelling. Why? Because every environment that uses Config Manager can actually benefit from uh, using the Cloud Management Gateway. I think you'll see that you know, as we go forward. All right. So here's the agenda. Before we get to that, I do want to just kind of put an asterisk here. So the Cloud Management Gateway has evolved since it was first introduced. Again, I'm re-recording the series to kind of update it for some of those changes. Uh, whenever the Cloud Management Gateway was first introduced, it would deploy itself to Azure using what's called the um, classic deployment model. Right? Recent updates have been made to where we now support in, uh, in the Cloud Management Gateway world deployment using the Azure Resource Manager deployment model. The Azure Resource Manager deployment model is the preferred model, strongly uh, recommended. In the build of Config Manager you're going to see here, 1810, uh, both the Azure Resource Manager deployment and the Classic deployment models are supported. But we're not going to talk about the classic deployment model because it's not long for this world in terms of Config Manager. It will actually be removed from the console uh, after the July 1st, 2019 release of Config Manager. That's documented, right? So we'll, you'll see it. I'll call it out, but um, won't talk about it. Uh, another thing. So if you're currently using the classic deployment model for your cloud management gateway, if you're using your cloud management gateway, then you need to plan to redeploy using the Azure Resource Manager option before it uh, is removed from the console, right? Config Manager is not going to migrate directly from uh, the classic cloud management gateways to the Azure Resource Manager cloud management gateways. You'll need to do that yourself. Okay, so here's the agenda we're going to go through. What is a cloud management gateway and why we care about it? Then we'll get into the fun part talking about the components, the options, restrictions, uh, really, uh, really fun part, the configuring, uh, watching it in action. We'll, we'll end up with some discussions of, of how it all fits together, um, troubleshooting tips and tricks and so on, right? Okay, so what is a cloud management gateway? Well, put simply, a cloud management gateway is, uh, is a proxy. It's a proxy for Config Manager site to client communication. It's in very many ways, just like a management point, right? Now it's got some other things from a management point as well and, and works differently, but essentially you can think of it as an Azure uh, cloud service that is effectively serving as a management point in the cloud. It's a way for clients that are uh, not able to get to an on-prem management point to be able to talk to uh, the cloud management gateway, right? Also, the cloud management gateway it is a cloud service. In that cloud service, we have uh, uh, virtual machines. Anywhere between one to 16 virtual machines can be configured per cloud management gateway. Right? Each virtual machine in a cloud management gateway supports up to 6,000 clients. So if you do the math on that, uh, you'll see really quickly that each instance of the cloud management gateway can support up to 96,000 clients, which is plenty for most environments, right? One of the things, too, to consider about the Cloud Management Gateway, which we'll, way, which we'll see, is when you implement this thing, you don't maybe want every single one of your clients to use the Cloud Management Gateway. It really is only maybe uh, the, the clients that roam outside of the corporate office, the, the laptops or, or whatever, uh, that you want to be able to use the Cloud Management Gateway. So uh, even though you might have, you know, pick a number, 200,000 devices under management, uh, only a subset of those uh, would not maybe need to access the Cloud Management Gateway, and so somewhere uh, likely uh, less than 96,000 would be using it. Now, if you need more than that, uh, it is possible to install more than one uh, Cloud Management Gateway. We won't do that here, but it is, it is possible. 
Right? We'll probably talk about that in the tips and tricks as we get close to the end. The virtual machines that are hosted in Azure, these are small uh, virtual machines because it is there is a cost associated, right? So currently they are A2 class VMs, and uh, and again you have control over how many you put out there. And then also the cloud management gateway is now able to also serve as a cloud distribution point. That wasn't always the case; it is now. And so uh, if you have historically been using a, a separate cloud distribution point. Uh, and a separate cloud management gateway. Now you can combine both of them together. So why a cloud management gateway? Well, put simply, to have a way to effectively and easily, that's the key, manage clients that are on the internet, right? How many times have you needed to uh, respond to an event quickly in your environment and some subset of your clients are not accessible because they are not currently on-prem connected uh, to, to on-prem via VPN or some other way. The Cloud Management Gateway allows you to manage clients anywhere they are in the world as long as they have an internet connection. There is no infrastructure, uh, extra infrastructure required that you need to, to purchase. So for example, we've always had the ability, well, I say always, for a long, long, long time, we've had the ability to manage internet clients with Config Manager. It's called Internet-Based Client Management. That requires adding additional infrastructure, uh, typically in the DMZ, management points and so on, distribution points and so forth that you have to maintain. With the Cloud Management Gateway, you don't need that, right? You just need to be able to have Azure and be able to put the, uh, the needed service uh, in Azure and, and so on. Uh, with the Cloud Management Gateway, a client detects automatically, is it on-prem, is it on the internet, and adjusts accordingly. So if we're on-prem, we, we're not going to automatically you know, pick the Cloud Management Gateway, we're going to pick an on-prem infrastructure so we don't have the cost associated with the Cloud Management Gateway. Now, in certain scenarios, you might actually want a client that's on-prem to talk to the cl uh, Cloud Management Gateway, and you can actually configure that. In fact, in the demo, I'll show you how to do that, how to force a client to the Cloud Management Gateway, uh, uh, even though it's on-prem. Cloud Management Gateway absolutely increases the value of your Config Manager investment. So all of the things that you can do with Config Manager, now you have full visibility into all of your clients, again, no matter where they are in the world, as long as they have an internet connection. Right? Um, again, we automatically detect whether on-prem or internet uh, no problem. So the way that we do that, right, so there's, there's been uh, situations in the past where I've gotten into a discussion where client, if you look in the client control panel applet says that it's internet, when really it's on-prem, it's on the internal network and questions have come up, why does it, how does it choose either, either internet or intranet? And so we will automatically detect that. The way it works is if a client can access a domain controller, uh, or if it can access an on-prem management point, then that client is considered to be on the intranet, right? Okay. Uh, there, there is a cost associated with the cloud management gateway. It is a cloud service, right? So we want to be able to help you control those costs, be able to have, have uh, levers you can pull about those costs. So some of those levers include client settings, which you'll see where you can determine which clients actually are able to access uh, the Cloud Management Gateway. Uh, it will also be, uh, another level will be VM configuration where you can choose between one and 16 virtual machines per instance of a Cloud Management Gateway. There's alerts that you have that will show you, you know, different threshold events and, and so forth. Uh, there's also the ability to stop uh, the Cloud Management Gateway so it's not servicing clients any longer and so on. Again, I'll show you some of these. Uh, innovation, another big reason why a Cloud Management Gateway. If you've seen the innovation that's happened with the Cloud Management Gateway since it was first introduced, then you understand this is uh, an area that, that has uh, received a lot of focus and uh, grown a whole lot. And, and so you know, probably will continue to receive tweaks you know, here and there. Uh, one of the changes introduced not too long ago, well, 1706, uh, of Config Manager was the ability to automatically do a client install through the Cloud Management Gateway, meaning you don't have to have the client on the intranet. You can just have it on the internet somewhere 
and be able to facilitate a client install. Again, I'll show you that. And then it's adaptable, right, to your needs. So we can handle all sorts of different scenarios as we list here. We can handle traditional PC management. So this would be your Windows 7 8.1.10 PCs in a traditional PC role. This is also servers, right? Uh, server operating systems work great with the cloud management gateway as well. And there are some scenarios where server operating systems could very well be uh, of interest. So one, one such scenario, uh, servers are on-prem, right? They are uh, not really internet-based so much. But one scenario that, uh, that, that really played well for the cloud management gateway was uh, servers that were in the DMZ needing to be managed through Config Manager. If you've kind of gone down that route, you realize in certain configurations, certain firewall ports have to be open and you know, connectivity between uh, the DMZ uh, systems and the domain and so forth have to be in place in order for the Config Manager client to talk and, and so forth. If you use the Cloud Management Gateway, you don't need any of that. All you need is the ability for these DMZ servers to talk to the internet, which they do anyway, and they can be managed, right? So that, that's one. And the traditional PC scenario uses PKI certificates to secure the communication channel. Modern PC uh, management. So this would be Windows 10 uh, systems that are using modern identity. These would be systems that are hybrid uh, joined or directly Azure AD joined, right? So to put a, a fine point on that, hybrid join, joined means that the device is actually joined to the on-prem Active Directory but registered in Azure AD. And then purely Azure AD joined means there is no uh, joining to the on-prem uh, on uh, domain. And here, the beauty of this solution is it uses Azure AD versus PKI for authentication. And as a natural result, the number of certificates needed to, uh, to install in this scenario are, uh, are I'm sorry, the number of certificates needed to, to effectively manage in this scenario are significantly uh, reduced. And then you also have the ability to do internet-based client installs uh, and so forth, and, and for that, Windows 10. Uh, okay. So what are the components that we need for the Cloud Management Gateway? So there are several. So you need an Azure subscription uh, for sure. And, and let me make a note before we jump in here. So there's a number of different configuration and certificate options that we'll discuss in this section. There's also a couple of, of demos, scenario kind of demos that I will do. The point here is there are a number of different configurations that you might bring to bear for the Cloud Management Gateway, depending on your specific scenario. They're not difficult, but I'm not covering every single twist that could be with the config, uh, Cloud Management Gateway configuration here. Just a couple to give you an idea, and from these, hopefully you can extrapolate with our documentation pretty well to whatever your specific uh, scenario is, right? Okay, so the, the couple of components. So the, uh, the first would be uh, your Azure subscription. So here it would be uh, having Azure Active Directory, right? Having Azure Active Directory user discovery. Now that one's an interesting one because in previous versions, we absolutely required that you have this enabled. Now it's not a requirement. It's recommended, but not a requirement. So let me explain that for a minute. So the Azure Active Directory user discovery was useful uh, in environments where you wanted to have authentication handled by Azure. And so the user being discovered would, would bring forward a token that could be used for that authentication purpose. Well, now that we are, uh, have progressed a bit, uh, we now can have devices joined, devices joined to Azure Active Directory. And when that device is joined to Azure Active Directory, we have a token from that device as well. And that token from the device itself can be used for authentication. So strictly, you don't need user discovery uh, today, right? Again, there's some caveats around it and you, you need to be on at least Windows 10 1703 for that to work and so forth. But um, uh, put that out there. Uh, in order to set up a cloud management gateway, you will need a user who is an Azure subscription admin to be able to log into the console and set things up. In terms of the cloud management gateway itself, the, uh, 
the gateway is expressed as being a cloud service uh, in Azure. So basically, the way the cloud management gateway works, it authenticates and forwards your config manager client requests uh, to the cloud management gateway connection point. And then that connection point will field the request, get a response back, send it back to the cloud management gateway, and then ultimately back to the client. Again, cloud management gateway cloud service will use between 1 and 16 virtual machines uh, in, in a single cloud management gateway. So I mentioned the cloud management gateway connection point. So this is an on-prem typical, well, a, a, an infrastructure site system, if you will, you know, piece in Config Manager. What this does, it enables a consistent and high-performance connection uh, between the Config Manager network or the on-prem network um, to the cloud management gateway service in Azure. Now, let me just make a fine point there. So I said on-prem network. It's very possible that you might have Config Manager uh, running in Azure. And so the question might be then, well, if I'm already running Config Manager in Azure, do I still need the Cloud Management Gateway? And the answer to that is very likely, absolutely yes, right? So when I say on-prem network, even if it's in Azure, this same stuff applies. Yeah, basically, the, the Cloud Management Gateway connection port will also publish settings to the Cloud Management Gateway. This includes uh, connection information and security settings and, and so forth. You need a service connection point. The service connection point must be running in online mode. And this handles all the cloud management gateway deployment tasks, monitors and report service health, logging information, uh, etc. Cloud distribution point. So again, I mentioned the cloud distribution point historically has been a separate component that you can put into Azure. And it still is. Right? So if you were running uh, in an environment that needed a cloud distribution point, but you did not yet have a cloud management gateway, then go ahead and add the cloud distribution point. It's going to benefit you, right? But the, the cloud management gateway now includes the ability to be a cloud distribution point, so you don't have to have both individually deployed. You can just deploy one and get both effectively. Then you need a management point, and if you want to do any kind of software updating through the cloud management gateway, a software update point. And then finally, uh, certificates. So certificates are interesting because when that topic comes up, sometimes config manager admins have a little bit of pause, uh, thinking complexity and so forth. And, and certificates really aren't that bad. Even if you build out a, a, a pure certificate-based structure for your cloud management gateway, it's not, it's not that bad. But uh, for the cloud management gateway, you will need at least one certificate for every configuration. So all configurations require at least the Cloud Management Gateway Server Authentication Certificate, right? There could be a requirement also for the Trusted Root uh, Certificate from your certificate authority based on how you actually generate your Cloud Management Gateway Server Auth. Let me, let me say it this way. The recommendation for certificates in the Cloud Management Gateway is to obtain them from a third-party provider. You can absolutely produce them from an on-prem certificate authority, no problem. The, the reason the third-party certificate provider is easier is because uh, if it's, if it's a, a well-known uh, certificate authority, uh, then, then, then Windows clients will already have a trust certificate in place to be able to use a certificate generated by this third party. If you generate the certificate yourself with your on-prem infrastructure, you will also need your trusted root certificate from your certificate authority to be in place on clients so that those clients will trust that certificate generated by your on-prem infrastructure. Very often, if you're using an on-prem infrastructure, you already have that trusted root cert in place, so it's not a big deal, but just understand uh, that extra requirement, right? Depending on your configuration, you will need additional certificates beyond. But, but at the base, in the simplest config where you have Azure AD doing your authentication and so forth, you need, at minimum, the Cloud Management Gateway Server Authentication Cert. I'll show that to you as we go along. And then finally, uh, options, right? And so here, I, I was struggling with how to actually present this in a, in a cohesive way. And then one of my colleagues, as you see, attributed at the bottom, Arnab Mitra, was actually uh, coming up with uh, a presentation to deliver internally, and I saw that presentation and, and really liked the flowcharts that he built to kind of describe this. So I, I included them here. 
uh, with his permission and, and want to walk you through that because there are a lot of options with the cloud management gateway. And when you first read through the options, you might get overwhelmed because there are so many ways to plug the cloud management gateway into various environments that exist, right? So as we look through the options, one of them is to think through the management point. So this flowchart really helps kind of explain the options. And so let's, let's take a look. So specifically for the management point, if your infrastructure is on Config Manager 1806 or higher, then ask the question, do I have enhanced HTTP enabled for my infrastructure? And, and by the way, if you don't, you should turn it on because it's actually makes things a whole lot easier, or at least should consider turning it on, because it does make things a whole lot easier in terms of configuration. So if you do have eHttp enabled, then you can just have your management point configured in standard uh, HTTP, you know, port, you know, port 80 mode, and, and no problem at all. If you do not have enhanced HTTP enabled, then you have to have your management point running in SSL mode, right? And we'll talk more about enhanced HTTP in a minute. In fact, you'll see it operating in just a minute. So if you are on Config Manager 1802, then you directly have to have your management point in SSL mode because there is no uh, enhanced HTTP. And then also, if you have a Config Manager 1710 or previous infrastructure, then the key question for you is, are you supporting you know, modern management? If the answer to that is yes, then you can use the same management point configured in SSL mode. If the answer uh, is no, then you're gonna have uh, just a standard HTTP management point, right? And then finally, just a note, SSL management points, you need to have a server authentication certificate. You do need to have uh, your internal DNS name only, right, configured, and then there is no private key uh, that is necessary, okay? Now, in terms of certificates and client authentication, a similar flowchart here that will help explain the options. So let's look at it. So the first question, are you Windows 7, 8.1, 10? Are you a server OS? Are you on 1607 of Windows 10 uh, kind of questions? If you are, then the question then becomes, uh, or, or the direction it becomes, you have to have an SSL certificate, right, to be able to communicate uh, for client authentication. If you're Windows 10 1703 or better, then the question becomes, okay, great, are we domain joined? If the answer is yes, then uh, are we hybrid uh, or directly Azure, Azure AD joined? Again, if the answer uh, here is no, then we don't have a choice except to use the SSL cert for authentication. If the answer is yes, we are either hybrid or directly Azure AD joined, then we ask the further question, do we have enhanced HTTP enable, enabled? If the answer to that is yes, then okay, great. We don't need a certificate. We're simply going to use Azure AD uh, authentication token as a way to authenticate. If enhanced HTTP is not enabled, then we ask the further question, is Azure Active Directory user discovery enabled? If it is, great, we can still avoid our certificate and just use your Azure AD auth uh, token to be able to authenticate, right? If Azure AD user discovery is not enabled, then we're back to using the SSL certificate, right? And then also, if we are not domain joined, then again, further question, are we Azure AD joined? If the answer is yes, then again, we go back to this section of the flowchart and so forth. And then if the answer is no, then we go back over here to SSL, right? So let me pull that back for a minute. So again, lots of choices in here, but hopefully this helps illustrate uh, how these choices kind of merge together and come to be. Okay, and then the final flowchart, trusted root certificate. So I also had a flowchart to illustrate the trusted root certificate, but found that to be actually a little bit more, more confusing. So let me just say it this way. The trusted root certificate is required to validate the trust relationship between the issued certificate and the certificate issuer. Now, if the certificate issuer is a third-party certificate authority, the needed trust certificate uh, to establish that trust relationship is likely already in place on systems and no further actions needed. 
If instead you're using an on-prem certificate authority, then make sure the trusted root certificate from that on-prem certificate authority is in place uh, on clients. And maybe it already is, right? Because if you have an on-prem certificate authority, that certificate authority likely is issuing certificates for other purposes. And so uh, that trusted root certificate would need to already be in place. So it might be a, a, a mood issue, right? Okay, so understanding all of this, what are the limitations, if any, of the cloud management gateway? And you see them listed here, right? There are a number of entries, but nothing really that is, is challenging in terms of functionality. So for example, task sequence scenarios. Right now, uh, a, a traditional image deployment task sequence is not supported through the cloud management gateway. A Windows 10 upgrade task sequence is, right? And there's documentation that shows which ones uh, are out there. And again, changes may be coming in these areas to add further support for additional task sequence scenarios as we go along. Client push, automatic client assignment, uh, the application catalog, uh, different things, remote tools, things you would expect, Wake on Land, Mac Linux, you know, all of these different things are, are not supported. But nothing in this list is uh, really a, a difficult thing to, to uh, work with. In other words, the core functionality and more than that of Config Manager is fully supported uh, through the Cloud Management Gateway. Now to the fun stuff. Okay, so we're going to talk about some scenarios. We're going to talk about setting up the Cloud Management Gateway. I'll show that to you. We'll watch the Cloud Management Gateway in action. And I've said this already, but as we get into this, just want to call it out again. There are multiple options that exist for configuring the Cloud Management Gateway. I'm going to show you two of them. And then there are derivations around uh, these that, that would be environment and scenario uh, specific. So this one specifically We'll be using Windows 10 devices that are joined to Azure AD. They are not joined to on-prem AD. They are not hybrid AD joined. Uh, so Azure AD will be used for authentication. So as we talk through these slides, keep that in the back of your mind as the requirements and the, the details for this specific scenario. Okay, so I'm going to use a demo to talk through all of this. So there are required certificates that are going to be needed in this scenario, specifically the Cloud Management Gateway um, certificate itself, right, for server authentication. Then because I'm issuing the Cloud Management Gateway certificate, I'm going to need to make sure the Trusted Root Certificate uh, Authority certificate is in place. I'll need to configure the Cloud Management Gateway. I'll need to configure some site properties. I'll need to configure the Cloud Management Gateway connector point and then uh, client-facing roles. So that said, let me go ahead and pull in my lab environment and show you kind of how to walk through uh, each one of these. All right, we're going to start with the certificate. So let me pull first in my domain controller, which is also my certificate authority, and we will walk through it. So let me launch um, my certificate authority. Oops, not right-click. Launch my certificate authority here, and we will get going. So while that's coming up, so just a couple of um, a couple of notes. So as you think about configuring your cloud management gateway, know that it always needs to be in place at the top level site of your uh, implementation, either at the standalone primary or at the CAS. Right now, again, it's possible though I, I would imagine highly unlikely to be needed in most configurations to configure multiple cloud management gateways. So I'm not really going to go into the details of that. You know, some scenarios where you might want to do that would be for migration from a classic deployed, or sorry, a cloud management gateway deployed in a classic configuration to the new Azure Resource Manager deployment uh, and so forth. But um, that, that's a really corner type scenario, so I won't really go through it. In terms of, of certificates, right, so just again to reiterate some points we've made, the Cloud Management Gateway Server Authentication Certificate, you're going to see me show you how to build here, is required for every single scenario where you have the Cloud Management Gateway. It's the only certificate that's required for every single uh, scenario. I've said it again, this one again before too, but I don't want to lose the point. It is recommended that the Cloud Management Gateway Server Authentication Certificate be obtained from a third-party certificate authority. Not a requirement, because I'm doing it from my on-prem, but uh, it is recommended. And again, the reason it's recommended is because clients must trust 
the issuer of the cloud management gateway server authentication certificate. They must trust that certificate. If you're doing, if you're getting that cert from a third party provider, that trust relationship should already be in place. If you're using your own, like I am, then you're going to also need to make sure that the certificate authority's trusted root certificate is on all of the clients. And you'll see me obtain that cert and show you how to put it in place. And then last thing, so you're going to see me as the process of building the cert uh, go through and and provide some uh, some FQDN information into the cert, right? When you obtain a cert from a third party, the only information that will come back is going to be tied to your organization's domain name. Well, whenever that domain name is referenced, you'll need to map that to the uh, the Azure. FQDN, right? And so that's going to need to be done with a CNAME record in DNS. The way I'm going to build my certificate, I'm not going to need that CNAME. But again, just little little tweaks around here. All right. And then last thing, which I'm not going to show either, is starting in 1802, the Cloud Manager Gateway Server Authentication Certificate will support using wildcards. I'm not going to use a wildcard here, but, uh, but know that that is an option uh, for you. That said, so let's just go into our certificate authority and let's build this. Now, I already have my certificate, so I'll, uh, I'll show you my issued certificates here, or sorry, my certificate templates. So I have my cloud management gateway certificate template already configured. So I've got it issued and everything's in place. But let me show you how to create it if you don't have it done. So the way I'm going to do this is go into my... Uh, certificate templates and I'm going to find my web server template and I'm going to just simply uh, duplicate that so right click duplicate template and then I'm going to answer a few questions in here so first I'm going to leave this alone so you need to make sure this says Windows 2003 uh, Enterprise Edition and or, or this option right here right you don't want any of the others just uh, that one right there and then in terms of the general tab you will give a name uh, for the cert, make it meaningful. I'm not going to put one in because I already have mine created. In terms of request handling, yes, allow the private key uh, to be exported for this particular uh, type of certificate. In terms of subject name, you do want to supply in the request. You need to configure that whenever you issue uh, the certificate. For security, what we're going to do here is we're going to remove uh, the enroll permissions for enterprise admins. And then one of the things we're also going to do is add our config manager uh, servers group, which I didn't show you to create that, but it's just an AD group that I created that will contain all of my config manager servers that also are IIS servers. So I'm gonna go add that here and look at configmgr. That will be right here. Okay, so I'm going to add that and give that group enroll permissions, uh, no problem. And then the, the last thing I'm going to do before issuing is go to the cryptography uh, node and make sure 2048 at minimum. Now, we do support up to 4096 if you want to go that high, but at least 2048 is fine. And then I'm going to hit uh, OK on that, and it's going to create it, and then... Uh, I, I'm good. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this. It's copy of, and since I just created that, I can right click and say new certificate template to issue, and I will see copy of, and I would just issue it from here. I'm not going to go issue it because I don't need to. In fact, I'm going to go back into manage, and delete this because I don't need this around. I just wanted to build it for you so you can see. Okay. So now that I have that certificate uh, created. What I need to do is go enroll my certificate. So what I'm going to do is just pull in my site server to do that enrollment. Uh, could, yeah, I'm just going to pull in the site server to do it. So let me open that up, and I'm going to pop into my MMC template. And again, I already have the certificate issued. Uh, you can see, uh, see it. Well, I, I was going to say you can see it here. You can't see it here because I don't need to keep it here. You'll understand that in a minute. So I'm going to go to all tasks and request new certificate, all right? And then as I go through this, and by the way, if you have not, if you've just issued your certificate, you just, just created your certificate, 
uh, on your certificate authority and you have not rebooted your server yet, then you will need to do that so that you can refresh your token and uh, otherwise you won't see that certificate in the list as I go forward, right? So you'll see I have my cloud management gateway cert and you also see at the bottom that it's requesting more information. So before I can issue this cert, I've got to supply that. And so specifically what I want to supply is my common name here. And so this is where I would give uh, name.cloudapp.net. Now this name, cloudapp.net, that is specifically the name, uh, domain name for Azure. So again, whenever you're issuing this from a third party cert, they would not issue something for cloudapp.net because that is not a domain that you own, your organization owns. They would issue you a certificate with dot whatever your uh, FQDN is for your organization. That's why you need the FQ, the, uh, the C name record in DNS to map whatever the issued value is here to the cloudapp.net equivalent. So I'm just gonna put that in. Again, I'm not gonna keep this cert because I don't really need to. Uh, I've already got it created, but I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. And now that I have the blue banner underneath went away and I can enroll and enrolling succeeded, no problem. So now I have a cert here uh, that was just generated for um, uh, for my lab. So if I look over to the cert template, this is it, right? So what I need to do now is I need to export this cert uh, and, and then be able to use it in the cloud management gateway configuration. So I'm going to export that. Click next. And no, uh, I don't need to export uh, the private key here. Actually, sorry. Yes, I do want to export the private key. And that's going to export it in a PFX format. Uh, so I need to assign a password. And again, I don't want to keep it, so I'm just going to be simple here. Uh, give a path, and then I will get that certificate exported. And then that's all I need to do. From that point, I can delete this registration uh, because I don't need it anymore. Uh, I'm going to be able to use the file uh, itself instead. Right. So that's why you didn't see it there. Now, another thing that I need to do unique for my environment since I'm issuing the certificate myself, I need to export the certificate from the trusted root certificate authority. Sorry, I need to export the trusted root certificate from this certificate authority so I can make sure it's in place on my clients. If not, I will get all sorts of security errors whenever I try to use the cloud management gateway. So that's easy to do here uh, as well. Let me close uh, this and go back now to my certificate authority and we will see how that process uh, works. So here is my uh, certificate authority again, actually, let me, sorry, it opened up on a wrong screen. Let me pull that over, there we go. Had to log into it and open back up my uh, certificates uh, uh, site here, certificate authority. Okay, so that's opening. And pretty easy to actually export the cert. Just click on the server name, right click, go to properties, and then view certificate. So this is my, my root cert, go to details, and then copy to file. I'll go back through the export wizard. It's gonna copy it to a CER, give it a file path and a name, and now I have my root certificate exported. And there's other ways you can do it as well. You know, if you want to, that's easy enough in my lab and so forth. So I will take my domain controller out of the picture. All right. And uh, now I need to, I have the two certs. So now that I have the two certs, um, I need to make sure and install the trusted root certificate uh, on the, the clients, which is pretty easy to do. I will actually jump ahead and show that to you real quick, just uh, while we're here. So I'll pull in one of my Windows 10 clients here. And here, I actually, I, in the MMC, I have the trusted root certificate already in place. I'll show that to you. Here's my trusted root certificate authority certificates. So here is the one from my certificate authority. Why am I not seeing it? There, right there. Okay, so, but if I want to import it, it's a pretty easy matter. Uh, I just need to browse to it. So let me do that. Okay, and here are all the certificates I've collected. Here's my root cert, so I just double click on it and I can install the cert. And it's gonna ask me current machine or local. I want it to be the local or current user or local machine, local machine. 
and I want to put that cert in the trusted root uh, Cerebral Authority store, hit OK, and then it would be imported and installed, and this client would then trust uh, my certificate authority. Now, uh, obviously this is a lab, and so doing that one or two, uh, one off or two off on a few client machines is really not uh, a problem. There are other ways to do it in bulk. You can use uh, a number of things. You can use Config Manager certificate profiles. You can use group policy. You can use scripting in other ways, right? So there's a number of ways you can get it out there. But that's how you do it. Okay. Now, one other thing about certificates. So very often you'll come across the idea of a client uh, certificate for authentication. That is absolutely not needed in this scenario because we're going to be using Azure for our client authentication. So I just call that out here to specifically address it in this scenario and comment that it is absolutely not needed here. Okay. So we've got all the certs we need uh, to be able to successfully build out the, um, the cloud management gateway. So that said, let's go ahead and pull back in uh, my, um, my config manager environment and keep going. So we're on the, the server side configuration is all, all of this on this particular PowerPoint slide. This demo is all the server side configuration. We'll get to the client side more so in just a minute. So let me pull up the, uh, the config manager console. So a note here, as of config manager 1806, if you, if you've ever configured the cloud manager gateway prior to 1806, you would be prompted for a trusted root cert. You are not prompted for a trusted root cert any longer because uh, the hope is that you don't really need it in most cases, right? Again, going to a third party CA and uh, so on. And certainly you don't need it when configuring the cloud management gateway itself in most scenarios. However, if your cloud management gateway deployment is going to leverage PKI for client information, then you absolutely do still need the trusted root certificate, and it needs to be added to your cloud management gateway deployment. It's not something we're going to do here because we don't need it. But in the next scenario where we are going to uh, do PKI, you'll see uh, some of those certs come into play there. Okay, that said, let's go in and, and configure our cloud management gateway. Pretty easy to do. So if we go under cloud services, expand that, and uh, go down to Cloud Management Gateway, you'll see that I already have mine configured. It's good to go. Now, I can add another one, and I will walk you through uh, adding another one just to kind of get the experience, and then we'll dive into mine a little bit. So I'm going to go create a Cloud Management Gateway. And so the first thing I'm going to be asked to do is which iteration of Azure, Government Cloud or Public Cloud, and then Azure Resource Manager or Classic Service Deployment. So we talked about this at the beginning of the session. Classic service deployment is still here in 1810, but it will be removed and it is deprecated. So I'm not even going to talk about this. You'll see the configuration options change a bit. We'll just talk about uh, Azure Resource Manager. So the first thing I need to do is sign in to my Azure subscription using a subscription admin, at least subscription admin account. So uh, here I'm just going to sign in to my Microsoft instance uh, of Azure. And uh, I'm, I'm going to pause the video while I'm doing that just so you don't have to watch me set it up. Okay, so completed the sign-in. No problem. And so what happens is we're going to go through and discover the detail about your Azure environment. And you can need to verify this and make sure, right? So uh, here I, do, I have a couple of subscription IDs I could choose from. I'm going to choose this one. And we have the Azure AD app name, the Azure AD tenant name. So let me show you this as a reminder. So where did these come from? Let me pull this over to the side for a minute. So if I go to Azure Services and I look at Cloud Management, you'll see that I have one for Microsoft and one for Tailspin Toys. That's just unique because of the way we do things at Microsoft. But suffice it to say, these uh, cloud, the, the Cloud Management configurations here are what provide, I'll, I'll minimize this here in a second, are what provide the detail. Right? So if I go to applications, when I set up cloud management, I set up a web app and a native, a native client app. These are the names and these are created in Azure for you by using this app. And you'll notice uh, here is the name of um, the server app. So we're discovering that here. Right? 
So that's where it comes from and why it's important to have that configured first. And then the Azure AD tenant name is, uh, is Microsoft here. So let me go ahead and pull this back up and there. Okay, good. Right. And so this is the tenant I'm going to be building Azure in so I can go forward. Now I go to settings. Here's where I need my certificate file. Right. So I'm going to browse to that PFX that I created right here. This is the one that I would have exported from my search store after I enrolled. And I'm going to get an error here. All right. Uh, well, we've got to get the password first. I'm going to get an error. Why? Because this name has to be unique in Azure. And it is not because I've already used it to configure my cloud management gateway. But then you go on, you see the uh, deployment name is going to be a .cloudapp.net. Uh, I have consistency between the two, so no need for a CNAME record. I can choose the region if I want to, how many virtual machine instances, and then these two are critical. Verify client certificate revocation. This has to be set correctly. So what does that mean? If your certificate authority on-prem or your third-party certificate authority publishes a certificate revocation list, yeah, then let the client verify against the certificate revocation list. In my case, I'm just using my own lab-based certificate authority. I am not publishing a certificate revocation list, so I must uncheck this. If I don't, I'm going to run into problems, right? And then this one, uh, this option here was added, again, in, in recent versions of Config Manager to allow the Cloud Management Gateway to also function as a, a cloud distribution port. So I'm turning that on. So at this stage, I'm going to shift and uh, yeah, I want to lose them and go into my cloud management gateway and show you the configuration. So if I go to properties, we'll see the same stuff, right? Here's my settings and I'm, I'm in the South Central region and I've got one VM and I'm allowing cloud management gateway to be a cloud distribution point. Here's my alerts that I can set. And then here's the content that is on my cloud distribution point that is my cloud management gateway right now, right? Okay. And so with all of that configured in the wizard, I would just select to proceed and hit OK, and, it, and, and Config Manager would proceed to go out and build the, uh, the Cloud Management Gateway. That process takes between 20 and 30 minutes, right? And at the end of it, uh, you will be able to see that everything is built here. You'll see a ready status for my Cloud Management Gateway. And we'll come back and we'll, I'll show you how to verify everything in a minute, ready status is one of the ways, but we'll come back to it. When the, the Cloud Management Gateway is deploying, the best log to watch to actually see all of that happening is the Cloud MGR log. will contain all sorts of detail, that's in Notepad, but all sorts of detail about the Cloud Management Gateway in progress, deploying, different phases, uh, and so on. Really good if you have errors to see what those are uh, and, and so forth, right? There's also the cloud service in Azure, again, we'll get to that uh, in a minute. So we're going to leave that now and keep going in terms of the configuration of our site. So now that we have the cloud management gateway deployed, uh, we'll need to go into our site and make a change, again, specific to this configuration. So I'll go into sites and go into properties of my site. And specifically, I want to enable a few things on the client communication tab. So the first thing is I want to enable enhanced HTTP communication. That is this checkbox right here. And I'm going to select uh, either HTTPS or HTTP as my option. Okay. Now, a, a word real quick about enhanced HTTP. So what this is, enhanced HTTP is a mechanism that allows administrators to still secure sensitive client communication, but avoid the need to maintain a PKI server in any related authentication uh, certificates. So, so with this in place, clients can, can securely still access content from distribution points. Again, no need for a network access account in this case, uh, client PKI certificate uh, and, and Windows authentication, right? So it really, it really works out really seamlessly to have this capability. Then also notice I am not enabling clients to use PKI client communication. Why? Because we don't need that. We're going to use Azure uh, authentication. And then also not configuring that clients check the certificate revocation list because I am not publishing one. So uh, make sure that matches. And then finally on this page, notice the trusted root certificate authority is blank because I don't 
need that in uh, in my site properties. I will need it on my clients to validate the cert from the Cloud Management Gateway, but not here. So that's that's it for that. Okay. So in, now that I have that, I do need to also set up my Cloud Management Gateway connection point. So the Cloud Management Gateway connection point uh, is referred to often as needing to have a client authentication certificate. That is true in some scenarios. It is not true here because we're using enhanced HTTP. The cert is not required, but, but where I have mine installed is here. So I have my cli uh, Cloud Management Gateway connection points, just a site system role. There's very minimal configuration to do here. Uh, so I'm just going to say what Cloud Management Gateway I want to communicate with in case I have more than one. And then the rest is, uh, is easy to do and not a, um, uh, not a problem. Again, we'll come back to that in just a minute for some additional verification. Okay, so now uh, to, to the last section where I need to configure is my, uh, my client-facing roles. So in my case, that's just going to be a management point. But the software update point is the same, basically. So if I go into the properties of my management point, there's just a couple of small things I need to do. One is I'm just going to select for my management point HTTP communication only. Why am I selecting HTTP? Because I am using enhanced HTTP, which means I don't need SSL. I just need standard port 80 HTTP communication. I'm also selecting to allow Config Manager Cloud Management Gateway traffic, right? And selecting both intranet and turnet. And that's all I need to do, right? So I don't have a software update point configured here, but I do have one for the site configured up here. So I'll just show that to you real quick. Um, here we go, properties. So a little bit different configuration, right? I am uh, uh, not allowing Config Manager CMG traffic for this one. Right, don't need to for this demo, but uh, but anyway, so you would if in fact you were going to use the software update point for uh, for your cloud management gateway. All right, all right. So that's configuring the server stuff. Now, what about client stuff? So just a reminder, you know, as we're going through this demo, this is specifically focused on the scenario of Azure AD being our method for authentication. Right, so whenever I say Win Windows 10 version, we do need to be Windows 10 version 1703 or better because only there can we leverage Azure AD for authentication instead of the client authentication uh, certificate. In client settings, we will, in fact, we'll, we'll go ahead and configure that. Let me just pull back in the lab so I can show you uh, this live as we're talking through it. So now back in the lab. So under administration client settings, here's where we go configure what clients should and should not be able to access the cloud services. So in my case, I'm using default client settings. In a production environment, you probably want to have a custom client policy, but cloud services here uh, enable cloud uh, clients to use the cloud management gateway and also access to a cloud distribution board. This one's interesting too. Automatically register new Windows 10 domain join uh, devices with Azure Active Directory. So choose what you will uh, here. So all of my clients uh, in my environment are enabled to use the Cloud Management Gateway. Uh, my clients are joined to Azure AD. So let me pull in uh, my two test clients. So here is uh, test client number one. Uh, pull, pull it in and we'll show you. So this is actually a client that is not domain joined, it's uh, on-prem domain joined at all. It's just Azure AD joined, as you'll see in just a minute. And while that's logging in, I will pull in my second client that I'm using here, which is already logged in, and same configuration. So if I go to settings, then uh, accounts, once I get in there, launch, okay, good. And then accounts. So access worker school. So what you will see is that I am joined to Azure AD, not on-prem AD at all. I also do happen to be Intune enrolled, which is not required at all for this. It's just the way my environment is set up. So this device is Azure AD joined. And then, um, no, I don't know why that was there. 
Uh, this is my other one, which is in the same configuration. So settings and accounts. So access worker school and same thing. I'm joined to Azure AD. How do I know that I'm joined to Azure AD? Well, if I go into Azure, pull that into the environment here. We go into Azure and go down to Azure Active Directory and look at my list of devices uh, here. You'll see a number of them, but the two in question are going to be, let me expand this if I can. Um, so find the right one. Sorry, I paused that just a minute. There were too many columns there. It was kind of hard to see. But uh, anyway, so I'll scroll down. You see a number of them here. Uh, one of the test ones is right here, Observer 10-5. It is Azure AD uh, registered, it shows here. It must be a little bit behind, but it's definitely an Azure AD because it is Azure AD joined. Another thing that I think might be going on is these initially had a, a name of desktop whatever. Um before I changed uh, the name on the device, so that's probably why. But either way, these are in Azure, uh, no problem. Now, one little complete sidebar thing, in case there are those watching the video that noticed this. So this environment that I'm in is an Azure environment for tailspintoys.com. Uh, You'll see that up here. You will also see, uh, as I go through some of the demos, especially in a minute, whenever I show you the Cloud Management Gateway configured, that the Cloud Management Gateway is configured in the Microsoft tenant, right? So I have two tenants, one here that I use for uh, joining devices and user synchronization, and another one, the Microsoft tenant that I use for my Cloud Management Gateway. Again, that is, that is a unique kind of requirement that we have as Microsoft employees, so don't get tripped up on that. What it does illustrate for you, though, is uh, the Cloud Management Gateway doesn't have to be in the same tenant as your users and devices in order for it to work, right? Just FYI, big tangent there, but in case anyone notices that, wanted to uh, to call it out. Okay, so let me minimize uh, this. Okay, so we're joined to Azure AD, uh, no problem. Now, another thing that's required, especially, well, if we're using Azure AD for authentication, is we have to have Azure AD tokens uh, configured and discovered for our devices for sure users as well again user discovery is an optional thing so uh, here i use just because it's my lab i tend to use the same account for everything so uh, here's that account so if i go to properties on the account there are two values that come from azure ad these two if you don't have this information filled out then you don't have the user information the token stuff properly discovered for the user now the user is not so critical, but the device absolutely is. And so if I go to my 10-1 uh, and 10-5 and go to properties, both will show you that they have tokens discovered, right? Both of these. If I did not have these populated, then um, it, wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't work effectively for me. So this Azure Directory tenant ID, that's my Tailspin Toys tenant. Here's my device ID in Tailspin Toys. And then uh, here as well is my other device that I'm using for testing in the scenario. And so it has, again, from my Tailspin Toys tenant and then the unique ID for it. So I have both, uh, both details discovered. I have the tokens uh, in place. And then last thing that I need to make sure of on the client side of this is that I have the Cloud Management Gateway configured. So I configured it, right? And then in order for the clients to know about it, I just pulled in 10-1 for now. In order for the clients to know about it, uh, they have to receive policy. And that's reflected in the Config Manager applet on the client. So if we go there and go to the Network tab, you will see the Cloud Management Gateway uh, information, FQDN, is present here. If it's not, then the client is not ready to use the Cloud Management Gateway. So that's 10-1. Let's go to 10-5, which is our other one, and it's definitely working. I already see it, but um, we'll show it anyway. So to control panel here, uh, config manager and network, we have the Cloud Manager Gateway there uh, as well. 
Okay, so we're good to go uh, on our clients. And that's what's required to make sure uh, on the client side that, that we are configured and good to go. Okay. Now that we have everything configured, let's walk through the process of actually validating that configuration and making sure everything worked as it was supposed to. And again, we'll go through this on the server side and we'll go through it on the client side. So on the server side specifically, again, I'll pull in the environment, we'll do some demos here. I want to validate the cloud management gateway is good to go. So to do that, first place I'll go is the config manager console. So pull that back in under administration, uh, cloud management gateway. I see the cloud management gateway is in a ready status. Okay, so I'm, I'm good to go uh, with that. Also, I can go into the Azure portal and verify the cloud management gateway is connected. And pull in the um, Azure uh, portal here. Okay, so now if I want to see the deployment of the cloud management gateway, I can go to all resources and go down to the name, Steve Rack Cloud, uh, Demo CMG. So you notice I have a cloud service, I have storage account information. So I'll start with the cloud service. So if I go into the cloud service, first I will notice that there is a virtual machine running here. Okay. Uh, I have one virtual machine because that's what I configured in my cloud management gateway configuration. You could have up to 16 here if you wanted to, right? Now, you'll notice also that whenever I click on this, it is just like any other virtual machine. I can connect to it. Now, here's a caveat. This connection to the virtual machine is disabled by default. And you should not have to connect to the virtual machine. It should just work uh, without a problem. However, you can, and sometimes it's useful to connect to the virtual machine to see what's configured and what's there for troubleshooting and, and uh, be able to look at logs and things like that. Don't mess with it, right, and, and so on, because Config Manager knows how to deploy this virtual machine correctly, but there are clues you can glean by looking at logs and looking at things inside the virtual machine that will lead you to realizing, oh, maybe I didn't, didn't configure X, Y, or Z exactly right, so then you can reconfigure it, Config Manager redeploys it. Don't, don't change it directly into the VM uh, at all. If you want to enable the RDP connection, it's just a matter of coming down here and enabling that, giving a username and password and, and information, enabling here, and then you can, you can connect in. So back to my overview. So if I go into my virtual machine, I can connect just like normal and open up my RDP uh, uh, connection here. So I'm gonna connect and join into the VM. It's coming from cloudapp.net. And then we say yes to connect. And we're logged into our virtual machine. So this happens to be already opened up. You can see my cloud management gateway proxy service down here. You can see some of the folders and, and different things, right? So we're not going to dig into it any more than that, but just kind of as an uh, FYI. It's, uh, it, it's available and, and so on. So I'm going to remove the connection to this. Okay. Now, while we're in here, so we have this configured, and it is where our virtual machine is running. But to have a virtual machine running, we also need to have disks and things of that nature. So if I go back to all resources uh, and look down, I have my storage account. So I'll go to my CMG uh, storage account. And just on the overview page, uh, I can look through this. So now remember, the Cloud Management Gateway can also be configured as a cloud distribution port. So as we go through here, you're going to see uh, the content that's stored on the cloud distribution port that is also our Cloud Management Gateway. So let's just kind of sift through. So under Blob Storage is where we're going to see the content. So right now, this is just our Config Manager client uh, is all that I have published up there just to show. Um, but then we have, you know, file content that we can look at. There's nothing here. Uh, we do have stuff in uh, the table storage, logging information and so forth. And, and on we go. So this just validates for you that everything is connected. So let me get rid of uh, that uh, real quick. Now, the next piece that we need to validate is our connection point. So the connection point is right down here. And by the way, before I just click on the connection point, notice... You know, here, yeah, we have ready, but we have a summary 
of detail and you know how much storage egress is going on right storage egress is important to know uh just in terms of you know cost potential and uh, things of that nature right we also have roll in points which looks strikingly like a management point right which it is a, a proxy uh, cloud management gateway it does have management point like very much functionality but here's our connection point and so once we install our connection point it'll come here and in order for us to be connected all the way through this has to show a connectivity status of connected we have some other uh, detail uh, here and, and so forth right so this validates that the cloud management gateway and the uh, cloud management gateway connection point are actually installed correctly and working and no problem now another thing that we talked about is we enabled enhanced http right that was done under sites just as a reminder under sites under client communication right here this was enabled that's enhanced http well how does that actually work we mentioned already that enhanced http is a way that you can secure client information uh, without having to deploy a pki infrastructure well how do we see that that actually was was done and is in place if i go to my cloud management gateway server directly which is right here okay there's a couple of places i can see that the certificate was deployed. The first will be in my search store. So if I look in my search store under personal certificates, you will see this, uh, this certificate, SMS role SSL certificate and uh, deployed you know, right here. Okay. And you can validate that cert is being used for uh, SSL communication by looking on your management point or sorry, on IIS here and on my default website, I will go to edit bindings and 443 and here is that certificate being used to secure uh, communication. And it is the only server off, if you will, certificate here. So let's go back to the personal store. Uh, so if you open up the cert, you can tell that it's used for server authentication uh, right here. Server authentication. Right, so, so we know uh, that's the right one. This is also uh, a, a, a SHA2 certificate, but uh, anyway. So no point is no certificates that I had to issue directly from my uh, certificate authority. This is all done by Config Manager itself. So we understand, uh, or hopefully, that's a way to go through and you validate that everything's configured correctly for your, um, for your uh, enhanced HTTP communication. Okay, so uh, for further validation, we have log files that we can look at aplenty. Uh, just on the site server, there's, I already mentioned the, uh, the Cloud MGR log right here that will show all of the uh, deployment of the cloud management gateway to Azure. We have the uh, CMG service name log that you, logs that you can look at and, and see what's going on. We also have the uh, SMS, I don't think it's here. Well, we have the cloud connection log. But yeah, let me pull back in the cloud management gateway server specifically. So uh, on this log, or on this server, we have the cloud proxy connector logs. This is for the cloud management gateway connection uh, point that we can, we can see what's going on. Now, there's other logs that you can configure as well. And I, I just turned them on a little bit ago, so I don't have them in here. Doesn't look like yet. But if you go to the Azure portal, right, go back to the Azure portal where uh, we were and take a look there in the cloud service. Let me uh, pull it as your console back in. Here we go. Now let's go back to the cloud service. All right. So if I go, come on, go back down to my cloud management gateway here and then click on configure. Uh, in full disclosure, I just found this the other day. I think it thought it was pretty cool. I haven't fully dug into it yet, but thought I would show it to you. So configuration and then go to XML uh, editor. So here we have trace level. By default, this is information, 
uh, informational. If you change it to verbose, then you get a few extra logs uh, that will help you. There's one called CMG setup, CMG service, uh, and so on, right? So those are actually stored in Azure storage and then synchronized to your on-prem uh, or your, your config manager structure every five minutes or so. Could be a 10 minute delay to the way it all works together. Anyway, just FYI, here's some additional logging that you can use to help track things down and uh, know what's going on, okay? So that's server-side stuff. How do we validate on the client side? Well, I showed you a little bit about the Azure AD tokens uh, in, for the user and for the device. Uh, there, there's one other way too. So again, in this scenario, we are relying on, the, on Azure AD for communication and authentication. Uh, so your device does need to be joined to Azure AD and it, it gets a certificate. Each device gets a certificate whenever they complete joinings. Let me show you that. So I just pull back one of the machines. Here's one of my test machines, close that out. Pull up my certificates MMC and you will see this certificate. So this certificate is one that is actually provisioned onto the device whenever you join it to Azure AD. If you delete this, then that will also remove the device from Azure AD. So that's an additional cert uh, that, uh, that, that's out there that's part of the whole equation of Azure AD uh, being able to authenticate and so forth. Uh, I showed you in the control panel applet the network tab where we list out the path to the CMG. Right? Another way that you can actually get that information in bulk is by uh, using a WMI command, or in this case, using PowerShell to execute a WMI command. Let me show you. Pull back in one of my other clients. So this WMI command is actually in the documentation, or this PowerShell command is in the documentation. If we run that, uh, we'll get back information. So you see that it's pulling from root CCM location services. Here's the class. Uh, yeah, sorry, I need to launch. This is admin, I always forget to do that. Hang with me, I'll be back when I have that done. Okay, now running as admin, we'll do that again. And so, yeah, here we go, got it back right away. But you see it's pulling against the root CCM location services namespace, specifically the SMS underscore active MP candidate class and focusing on just those that are internet based uh, MPs, right, which is the cloud management gateway. So that's a good way to validate as well that your client knows about this particular uh, cloud management gateway, right? Okay, and then finally, logs for the client itself. So there's, we've talked about tokens a lot, right? So there's a process clients go through to communicate with the config manager infrastructure to get tokens assigned to them. Uh, part of that communication is logged on the cloud management gateway itself in a log called uh, CCM underscore STS. So if we go to logs, uh, wrong log folder. I go to this log folder. Here's the CCM STS log. So we can pull that open and trace. We can see communication about tokens being returned to the client and request and validating Azure AD tokens and issuing SCCM tokens. That's part of it. We can also see uh, the device ID in question. Uh, we can see the user ID, if there is a user, which in this case there's not, it's just the device. We see the GUID of the device and, and so forth, right? So good, good logging there. Uh, also, on the clients, let me pull back in one of my two clients. Just pull back in this one. We have a log here that will record uh, the communication. So if I go to logs, this one, ADAL operation provider. So it just talks about retreat, you know, requesting tokens and so on. So right, you, you can kind of see the whole communication uh, process there. Right? So with all of that, we have lots of tools to validate that the Cloud Management Gateway is communicating, is talking, so we're good, right? But as said, there's a lot of moving parts here. So trying, uh, trying to communicate that, I put together a, a kind of a visual here, the goal again to help understand what all is happening and where things are happening, right? So at our primary server, we do have enhanced HTTP enabled, right? We also have our management point configured for port 80 HTTP traffic because we have enhanced HTTP going on. We have a couple of uh, Windows 10 test clients. They do have the trusted root certificate on them because I 
uh, generated my own cloud management gateway certificate. And so the clients have to trust them. So, so I do have my, my um, trusted root cert on the clients. And then these two machines are both Azure AD joined. And that's the extent uh, of the configuration. Hopefully the visual helps summarize uh, a bit better uh, for you. So that, that said, let's go actually see the cloud management gateway uh, in action. So this part will actually be fairly, fairly uh, short, but it does illustrate the, uh, the, the cloud management gateway working. So first, I want to force, so I'm all VMs here. In my lab, it's just all on-prem equivalent, right? So as if I'm connected to my on-prem network. So I need a mechanism to force the client to think it's in the internet mode, right? And you do too, because the only other way to test this is to literally leave your network to uh, a, your local coffee shop of some sort, right? Or, or a favorite location that has wireless available, home, whatever, and, and connect up. You don't want to have to do that. So you can absolutely tell the client to, to think it's on the internet all the time. Uh, one, one key part of that is typing regedit correctly. So let, me, let me type that again. Okay, so if I go to regedit and then drill down to the CCM registry key, then there's an option here under CCM called security, right? Under security, there's client always on internet. And I've already selected that to be one, which means, yes, it is always on the internet. If that's the default of zero, then you can change it to one and then you'll have to restart CCM exec uh, or the SMS agent host service. And uh, you can see that the, the client believes that it is on the internet. One thing as well about this that is a telltale sign that you're communicating on the internet is uh, if you go to the config manager applet, the general tab, uh, you will not see an internet, uh, a management point specified up here. You will see always internet and there will not be a management point specified. If you set that back to zero, then you will see, and restart the service, then you will see a management point there, right? So that's another telltale sign that you're communicating uh, the way that you think you are. So once you have things shifted over, it's pretty easy to go validate whether you're communicating successfully with, uh, with the Cloud Management Gateway. A couple of places that I use to go check. So under logs, there's CCM messaging, and CCM messaging sends information back and forth to the management point. And you can see uh, chatter here about uh, validating certs and so forth. You can see uh, status uh, zero, successful, no problem. Uh, if I look for a minute, I will find the, uh, the cloud management gateway probably. Uh, yeah, right there, host name. This is the cloud management gateway we're talking to. Right, so we're communicating all the way through, uh, no problem. Another way that you can do it is you can force a policy cycle. And if you have any policy, which I probably don't in my lab, but if you have any policy, then you can see that policy request uh, come back from policy agents. So let me just go do that for a minute. Policy retrieval, run now, okay. And I'll leave that up and I'm gonna come back to it in just a minute and look in the policy agent log. Policy agent, probably won't get anything here, but uh, you can see I'm requesting it. Um, but I probably won't get any policy assignments back because it's my lab again. But that's one way you can test as well to see everything is going on. A third way, which is interesting to do, is just force an inventory or a discovery cycle or whatever on the client. Now, what I'm going to show you first, let me pull back in the site server. Okay, so on the site server, if I go to assets and compliance and look at my client, let me be sure which one. So I'm looking at 10-5. So 10-5. And if I click start, resource explorer, and then hardware, so I'll go down and I can look at workstation status. Last hardware scan was 220 at 1910. So let me minimize that. Now I'm gonna go force a hardware inventory cycle. I'm gonna run that now, right? 
and that should be running. It takes a, a few minutes to run. So I'm going to pull the site server back in and we will uh, pause the video real quick. I'm going to let that actually process through. Then we'll update and see that we had a recent hardware inventory. Okay, so it took just a couple of minutes, but you see 221 uh, today just came in recently. So in fact, uh, that confirms the cloud management gateway is communicating uh, just like it should. And as if we needed to even do that, you see two green check marks here, which would not be here if the cloud management gateway was not connected to these clients or these clients weren't connected to the cloud management gateway. So all of those indications that the cloud management gateway is working just fine, all the actions uh, can happen normally one that I will show you so this this takes a second to actually implement but I'll just show you another one uh, just as, as confirmation so if I go uh, in we make sure the client yeah that's five so if I go in to my uh, client not uh, notification and tell it to restart then I will say yes and that's going to use the high speed channel so high speed channel totally supported so we'll just watch this client for a minute and within just not very long, I should get a notification that this client will be required to restart. It doesn't happen immediately, but yeah, there we go. So we get the restart required notification and we can go ahead and do that. I actually will tell it, go ahead and restart now uh, so I can get it out of the way. But all of those together will minimize that. All of those together show you how to configure the cloud management gateway in this particular scenario with Azure being the authentication mechanism. Uh, on the server side, on the client side, what to check for to verify everything's configured in Azure, on the server, on the client, and then we actually see Cloud Management Gateway working uh, here. Okay, so it took us quite a bit of uh, twist and turns to actually get through this scenario. Now, what about scenario number two? So in this scenario, we're going to shift gears, and instead of using Azure Active Directory for authentication, which only works with Windows 10 uh, clients and the Cloud Manager Gateway, we're going to show adding certificate authentication, okay? And when I say adding certificate authentication, the goal of this particular scenario is to take what we've already built and add to it so that at the end of this process, we can continue to support our Windows 10 Azure AD uh, clients and then also add support in for those clients that have to connect through certificates. So not very many changes that we have to do to actually do that, but let's look at something first. So here's, here's a table that comes directly out of the documentation that describes setting up a cloud management gateway. So we've talked about already that there are a number of different ways and scenarios that you can set up the cloud management gateway, certificate configurations, uh, and so on. So if you look at uh, Config Manager 1806, so I'm on 1810, then uh, in a workgroup type config or you know, in an AD join config or whatever it is, all of these are, are similar, we can use either enhanced HTTP or SSL-based uh, HTTP, right? Well, I already have enhanced HTTP set up. And so I don't want to have to do SSL on my management points if I don't have to. So I'm going to go this route, right? What that means is the client is going to have uh, a client authentication certificate to be able to do that kind of communication, right? So I've set that up. So let's see what the changes were. So really, only a couple. So the first one is, I need to take my trusted root certificate authority certificate and I need to position it so that the cloud management gateway can actually use it, right? That is a requirement for, uh, for communication to happen uh, correctly. And then there's also site properties that I need to adjust. So let me pull in the, uh, the site server. It showed you already how to obtain the, uh, the trusted root certificate. So let me just go ahead and pull in the site server and we will make the changes uh, here. So if I go to administration and then go to cloud services and my cloud management gateway and open up the properties of my cloud management gateway. So I've already made these changes. Right, just so I can have it set up. And then go to settings. So I called out that, or I think I did, documentation for sure does, that in later versions of Config Manager, used to be here there was actually a specific section to say uh, load up the trusted root certificate. That's not here anymore, but yet you do have this certificates option. And I have loaded the trusted root certificate for my certificate authority. 
So that action alone will take that certificate and place it on my uh, cloud management gateway. Right? One other thing I need to do here in site properties. So move down to site configuration, sites, and site properties. So if I go here and into the client communication uh, tab, what you'll see is that I have now enabled use PKI client certificate. I've not done anything else. I've not added my trusted root cert here. I've not done anything with CRL checking. All that is exactly as it has been. So on the site server, those are the two configurations that I've needed to adjust. Let's pull that out of the equation. All right, now, in addition, there's a couple of things on the client. The key one is we need now to provision a client authentication certificate. That is a client thing. I do need to get that certificate ready to go. So I'll show you, uh, walk through, just like I showed you for the CMG cert, but I'll show you how to go through and provision that certificate. Let me pull in my domain controller, which also hosts my certificate authority. All right. So if I go to Windows Administrative Tools, go to Certificate Authority, Certificate Authority will launch and then pretty easy to do, uh, even easier than the other one. I'm going to, uh, sorry, expand this, go to Certificate Templates. Now you will see I actually already have, I've got a couple for different purposes here. Uh, I've got my client authentication cert. So if I go to Manage, the process to build this cert is really easy. Here, I'm going to duplicate the workstation authentication cert. So I would duplicate that and then keep all of this the same. On the general tab, I would give it whatever name that I want to give it. And then the only other thing that I need to do is under security for domain computers, I'm going to grant uh, read and then auto enroll, right? Now, for the demo, I'm not actually going to do auto-enroll. Uh, I'm not actually going to, I don't have my cert configured to auto-enroll because I don't want every single one of my lab machines to receive this cert, right? Uh, in the production environment, it's very reasonable to be able to do that. And you can set up group policy to scope down if you want to do that, you know, kind of thing. But I've created the cert and I've issued the cert. And here is... Uh, again, here are several of the certs. Here's one of my client authentication certs, right? That's configured uh, this way. And so for security, again, I uh, for domain computers, I'm not, well, that one I am, but, but the one I'm using, which one is it? Uh, I'm not allowing for, uh, for client auth uh, or, or for auto-enrollment, sorry. So anyway, before, before I go on the rabbit hole for that one, uh, we'll just uh, go out of that. So, so the cert is now being issued by this system. So now that the cert is being issued, I just need to go enroll the cert on whatever clients I want to uh, be able to, to communicate with, with the client authentication cert. So I've picked two on purpose. The first one I've picked is my Windows 7 machine. And again, this is already enrolled, but I'll show it to you anyway. So to go enroll this thing, I would just launch the MMC, so doing this manually and uh, launch the certificate snap-in, add, and local com or computer account and local machine. Cool, so I have that done. And so uh, in my personal store, I would just go uh, select to uh, enroll in my cert. Sorry, I'm clicking the wrong place. All tasks, request new cert, that's what I intended to click. Click next. And again, if you just configured that template, you will probably need to reboot your machine so that it will show up. But you'll see I have, uh, I have a few client auth certs. This is the one that I actually used. So I would click on it and uh, click enroll. And then I've already done that. And I have my certificate right here. I know where it came from because I can see in the template name uh, right here what template was used to generate it. So this is the one that I use to generate it, right? So uh, good to go. So I have this client auth cert working and, and, and good to go, right? And then I, so this one is, is set. Now, uh, also I picked, let me pull this out of the, uh, out of the, the mix. I also picked a server uh, machine just to prove the point that we can manage servers this way. Back to my domain controller. 
So here, if I launch uh, the cert snap in, or the MMC snap in, and go to my certificates, I'll show you that I already have the cert in there for this. And I'll just keep the snap in probably for this one, but either way. Local computer, and OK. All right, so if I go to my personal store here, indeed, I see uh, my cert. Here it's for client authentication. I click on it and I can tell which template actually issued it um, here. Well, I, I picked the right one anyway. So actually I think I saw it here and it's not one of the ones that I enrolled in, but it works nonetheless and so it's okay. And client auth search are pretty easy. So here's client auth and this is actually the template name. So. Uh, it's not the workstation auth one that I, I duplicated, but either way, it is a working certificate. I just noticed that while I was doing the demo. So I will keep that, uh, that here. All right, the only other thing is now that we're using certificates, we can support any version of Windows that's a supported Config Manager client. That's any workstation OS, any server OS. Uh, there's not a problem uh, at all. So with these small updates that we've made, I have updated the graphic. I want to show it to you and kind of call those out. So here we have PKI communication that's now enabled at the site. Enhanced HTTP is also still enabled uh, at the site. Uh, we have our management point that is still configured to use just port 80 HTTP traffic. Right? And so in terms of, of Azure, we, we are not Azure AD joining our machines. These are just any uh, flavor of supported OS that you would like. Each one will have a client authentication cert. Each one will also have the trusted uh, root cert from the certificate authority that issued these, right? Because again, I'm using my own on-prem certificate authority. Notice up here as well that the Cloud Management Gateway has the Cloud Management Gateway cert and also the trusted root certificate uh, configured on it. So small changes, yes, but, but needed changes to support uh, authentication based on certificates. Okay, so let's go watch this actually work. So to, to do this, again, I'm going to pull back in. Let's start with the Windows 7 uh, machine, and we'll see it work. All right, and so just a, a reminder. Let me go ahead and maximize this. Just a reminder that I've already shown you. Uh, I'm forcing this machine to communicate uh, as if it's on the Internet, even though it's thought to be on-prem, it's in my own you know, virtual machine network, so I had to, to add that so it would actually think it's on uh, the internet. And so the other thing uh, that I want to do, now that I've done that, I've actually restarted it. Let me show you all this. Uh, again, I'm not going to show you every single nuance of it because we've already seen it, but if I go to the Config Manager console, you'll see I'm in PKI. I don't list a management point here, which means that I am trying to use the Cloud Management Gateway. You'll see that in a minute. So one of the things that's important to validate that my machine is using a certificate and the right one is to go into the client ID manager startup log uh, where we see that. So client ID manager, client ID manager startup log here. There we go. And so you'll see that it's using a certificate thumbprint and validating and, and all the chatter related to it. So my certificate thumbprint is 72 delta 2. Well, if I want to validate that's the right cert, which I do, I should have left MMC open, but we can get it back real quick. And remove snap in, certificates, computer. Let's say we can get it back real quick. Computer finish, okay. And then under personal store, Here's my certificate, and if I look at the details and scroll down, this is indeed the thumbprint. So I know that I'm picking up the right one, that the Config Manager client's picking up the right one uh, and using it. So I should be done uh, with that here. The other place to validate that, uh, that everything's working is by looking in CCM messaging, because uh, that should list the um, Cloud Management Gateway as the server that we're trying to communicate to. And in fact, it does, right? No errors here at all. So we're, we're communicating uh, without a problem. 
Uh, we can do what we've already done, force a policy cycle on the client, do those kind of things, force a hardware inventory. Probably the quickest way to also just validate communication is let me pull in the site server and we will force this thing to reboot like we did the other one or at least get a reboot going. Right, so here we go. And as it's in compliance, devices, 7-1, we'll do a client notification, restart. Okay, we quickly pull this out of the way and hopefully we will see in just a minute a pop-up that says we're going to need to restart uh, the machine. And yes, Windows is genuine, don't worry. Uh, but we should see a pop-up here in just a second. Well, that's interesting. I'm not actually getting the, uh, the, the reboot message down. I don't know. I'm going to go the other route and let's just do a hardware inventory because that's always a good uh, indication. So just go ahead and do our hardware inventory cycle. Hit run now. Uh, that'll take a second. So you'll see uh, 6.18 is the date here. Let's pull back in the site server. And on our machine, start resource explorer. And the last time we did a hardware inventory should have been today, but yeah, back 313. So we will give that a second to process up and then that should update in the console. And there it is. So we, we got the hardware inventory. So we know that the cloud management gateway uh, configuration is working. So let me go ahead and remove the Windows 7 machine and show you the domain controller actually that I'm using uh, as well. So pull that in just as a second check. So here's my domain controller. It's the same one we've been looking at and same kind of deal. So in my uh, control panel, I want to validate that it is in fact looking like it's communicating with the cloud management gateway and it should, again, PKI, no specific management point listed. So now I can look in the client ID manager startup log and validate uh, that in fact, it's using the correct cert. That's the wrong log area here. Client ID manager startup. It's our friend notepad to look at the logs. But either way, we see that it's actually communicating. It's got the cert 747 Charlie and that cert, if we quickly pop in the uh, MMC that I left open here, 7C7 Charlie should be our uh, thumbprint. And 747 Charlie. So we see this. And so uh, that's actually good. So that was a surprise to me that that cert was not issued with my template that I thought, but it is a client auth cert, which just shows you it's pretty easy to get a valid client auth cert uh, to work and, and so forth, right? So now that we know that, we can look at CCM messaging and see, in fact, that we are communicating forward with, uh, with the site. You know, all of these, no errors uh, at all. We see... Um, references in here somewhere uh, to using the cloud management gateway uh, and so forth, right? Probably Notepad, the easiest way is to go down and scroll over to this. Yeah, so here we're using the cloud management gateway, uh, no problem. So I'm going to try, just because now I'm curious, uh, I'm going to try to do a reboot on this one. And if it doesn't work, I'll do a hardware inventory on it. But uh, let's see. So client notification. Restart. Let's get out of the way as quick as we can and kind of watch for a minute and see if we get the notification uh, on the system here for a restart. And while we're waiting, I will just go back in and uh, kick an inventory just in case. Control panel. And applet. And actions do a hardware inventory cycle. So run now. Okay. So we will just check back on the site and see what's going on with that hardware inventory. Uh, so here's DC0. Start Resource Explorer. Hardware. And what was the last one we got? So 505. So we should see that update here in just a sec. Okay, and so the uh, the inventory updated there as well. So we're good, right? So 
uh, kind of a bit anticlimactic in some ways to actually see the cloud management gateway work because it's just doing normal client actions when it does. But anyway, so that's a couple of good tests to show the cloud management gateway in action in a couple of scenarios. Oh, and before I, uh, I totally leave the scenario, I just want to call attention to what you've already seen. Here were the first two clients that are using Azure AD Auth for communication. They are still green. They are still active just as much as the certificate-based ones are, right? So uh, we haven't excluded any functionality by the modifications we've made. We've just added on uh, capability. Cool. So our third scenario, internet-based client installation. So here, just real quickly, I want to show you how it's possible to install the client even if the client, the system that's receiving the client is located just on the internet, not on your corporate network, not connected by VPN, etc. Now, there are, this was not always something that you could do with the Cloud Management Gateway. It was introduced fairly soon after the Cloud Management Gateway came to be. So to illustrate this, what I want to do is show you the client install for the Windows 10 system, one of the two that I was using earlier that I've removed the client from, I'm going to put it back on and reconfigure this so that it is a system purely on the internet. So this is the command line uh, that we're gonna use. Let me just go ahead and pull the system in. We already have that command line here. So what I wanna show you as well uh, as, we're, as we're getting started here. So this system, uh, let me show you in settings here, it has right now a connection to the internet but not anywhere else. So I've removed the connection to, uh, to my internal networks. So all I have right now is the internet you know, on, this, uh, on this machine. Right. Um, also, as we get started, just to show that we have a clean system, uh, I do not have the client folder at all or even CCM setup uh, installed here. I will shortly uh, when I run this, but uh, not until then. So here's the command line that we're going to use, right? So uh, a couple of discussion points. So I have no CRL check because I don't have, uh, I'm using my own uh, organization's certificate authority that it does not publish a certificate revocation list to the internet. So I'm configuring it that way, you know, on purpose. Then I have a couple of references to my cloud management gateway, setting the site code, the Azure AD tenant ID. So let me show you where I get these pieces. Uh, so let me pull in Azure for uh, for just a second here, and we'll navigate to get those pieces. Um, okay, if I can grab it. There. There we go. All right, good. So let me go into Azure. So I'm going to go to Azure Active Directory, and I need the tenant uh, tenant ID. Come on, Azure. There we go. So I'm going to go to Properties here and I will have the name as well as the directory ID uh, that I need. So that will satisfy these two, uh, Azure uh, Tenant ID, Azure AD name. Now I need the Azure AD resource uh, URI. So what that's going to come from is my server app. And so if I pull that uh, this back in and go to uh, app registrations and I'm going to show all of my app registrations, then I can go to my server app, which is here, and go to settings, and then go to properties, and I will have my app ID URI uh, right here. So that's what I will put. So that's what I will put in my command line uh, right here. And then finally, I need uh, my Azure AD client app ID. So I'm going to go to my client app to get that. So go back over here. Here's my client app. And the app ID that I need is right here. Or the ID that I need is right here under application ID. So I have all of those. Uh, notice it's called a client app ID. So don't, uh, don't be confused with client ID, whatever. It is the application ID. So now that I have all of those, I'm just going to hit enter and watch CCM Setup Startup. I do have the CCM Setup folder here, and I can watch, because I have Trace uh, loaded already on the desktop, and open up CCM Trace. Now I'll see a little bit here, a couple of red things as we go through. Um, 
and uh, see where we go uh, with this, right? So you can see that I'm referencing my cloud management gateway connector point URL and so forth. And we've got a couple of things that are going on here. All right. So as I scroll through, you see that I'm got, I've actually got my cloud DP listed. I've also got my cloud management gateway listed. This doesn't have the client content. So we will actually use the cloud management gateway and roll on through. Uh, and, and you see that I'm doing a little bit of you know, a couple of errors going through here. So nothing terrible, uh, nothing's broken this so far. We do see that I'm using my cloud management gateway for my URL continuing on down through. So again, don't let the red in this case uh, disturb you. It's just part of normal processing. And so now finally, I'm starting a bits download. I'm getting files. Uh, you can see the files that I'm bringing down and on we go. Now we're on to normal client setup and it's scrolling along just fine until uh, pretty soon here, I will be done uh, with client setup. So I'll just keep letting it roll here. Uh, actually, I'm going to pause now just so you don't have to watch the MSI roll and I'll be right Okay, and finally we get setup exiting with exit code zero. So the client install uh, did in fact finish. So we will go to the control panel. May not be there yet, but let's just see if uh, we have finished setup of this. So config manager, maybe not yet. Yeah, it's still in progress. So we'll give it a second and come back. So actually while we're waiting on that, I will go ahead and show you this too. So if I go into the... Uh, well, there it was right there on the first screen, but either way, if I go into the logs on the client and look at the client ID manager startup, uh, we'll see that it's actually uh, working on uh, working on registering here as we go through, let me pause it. So here as we go through, uh, it's working on the registration task, uh, so on, selecting the right thumbprint, initializing renewal, uh, looking at Azure AD join status, and so forth, right? So it's a, a perfectly normal looking um, log for our client. And so su uh, successfully initiating uh, registration renewal, and so we wait a little bit. So now client registration is pending, so that just, hap uh, that just happened, shows that we're using Azure AD auth. And very soon now, we should be out of our 60-second wait. And hopefully at that point, the client will be registered. Let's see. Yeah, client is registered. So we are good to go getting our token, which we need for communication, the STS token. So those logs we referred to before. And at this stage, we should be well on our way to, uh, to being registered. It's all a bit of red there. Again, not worried about that. Uh, should be good to go. And we have a number of logs that have flown in uh, since then. And so we do know that we're communicating okay. We can check with CCM messaging and notice uh, no errors. Yeah, we're still early in the process, but no errors yet. If I go refresh my config manager applet, should see uh, at this stage the site code is registered. So we are just waiting still for the client actions to show up. And as soon as they do, I will be back. Okay, and with that, the client actions are all there. Still probably a little bit of stuff going on behind the scenes, but we notice now we have a fully... Uh, functioning fully installed client. Again, no uh, connections here except to the internet. So that's the only way the client got loaded. I will also show you with this configuration uh, under security for our client, it is not set to force the client to always think it's internet facing. So if I add a connection so that the client can get to on-prem resources or my organization's resources, then it will shift over and no longer uh, be using the cloud management gateway. Also on the um, client applet here, it shows that we do have an assigned management point, but uh, also shows that we are currently internet and the logs that we've been looking at confirm that we are actually talking uh, to the cloud management gateway. Let me go back into CCM messaging just to uh, just to show that. Well, and that quickly we updated, so we're, we're definitely talking to the cloud management gateway. We can we can see it here, and there's no other way we would be communicating because we don't have any path except the internet. In fact, I just wonder if I were to shut this down, uh, close this down, and reopen it, if it would have updated. Uh, no. So anyway, so yeah, we're using it, no problem. 
it shows it, uh, you can see it, and everything is, uh, is good to go. Now, how do we confirm that we are actually using the Cloud Manager Gateway? Well, one is uh, what we've already done, looked at CCM messaging, looked at the networking, and uh, so forth. Another thing is we can just wait for hardware inventory to show up, which would have been initiated just to make sure that uh, we get it as quickly as possible. I'll go ahead and quick it, uh, click it here, and we should get hardware inventory from the client that just installed. And then another way that's really helpful is if we can use our high-speed notification channel and kick a reboot, perhaps, uh, with the high-speed notification channel. So this is the client. You can see it's not green yet because it hasn't been uh, installed really that long. And so I'm going to wait for this to be green. And as soon as it is, uh, we will go ahead and trigger uh, the reboot and check the inventory. So I'll be right back whenever that happens. Okay, so we notice that the client has a green check mark now. If I go into uh, inventory, so start resource explorer, uh, the inventory that the client has just sent up has shown up. We can tell workstation status. Uh, 224 at 117, which is very close to what uh, was just now, right? And so the last thing I want to do is go now and uh, force a reboot on this. So client notifications, let's do a restart. So I'm going to get that out of the way as quickly as I can. And to the client, hopefully we'll see a reboot notification pop up here uh, in just a minute. All right, there it is, right? So everything is working this client is operating just as it should. I'm going to tell it to go ahead and restart just so I can get that reboot cleared and pull this out of the way. All right. And that is an example of installing the client when a system is purely and totally on the Internet. And before finishing this up, one more little tip I want to throw your way. Let me pull Azure back in. So in order for this whole thing to work with the, uh, the client install uh, from the internet, there is one thing that's required, and it may already be in place in your environment, but if you're, tr if you're working with this and you're trying to make it work and it's just not working for whatever reason, uh, check this. So I'm still in the client, the client app settings, right? Uh, what I need to do is make sure that the uh, redirect URI is configured appropriately. So if I go to uh, settings and come over here to redirect URIs, this redirect URI, I'm sorry, this one up here is required, right? In my environment, this was not here by default. And there's actually documentation. Uh, if you go look at our documentation, uh, you will see uh, near the bottom a, um, a reference to the fact that you need to add this URI, right? So it could be in your environment if this client install method is not working, but you don't have this redirect URI, just add it to the client app and you should be good to go. Okay, we've talked about a lot here and so I want to move toward the end but there's a couple of slides I want to show you to try to help uh, illustrate again how all of this works and how all of it fits together. Right? And this is essentially the flow of the way information works communicating with the Cloud Management Gateway. So what I've done here, I've actually listed the Cloud Management Gateway separate from the Cloud Distribution Point. Again, the Cloud Distribution Point is part of the Cloud Management Gateway now, uh, or it can be standalone too, depending on configuration, but I represent it now as two separate parts. But just know that these two are together as I reference the Cloud Management Gateway. So the way it works, whenever a client uh, needs to get content or communicate or whatever, uh, it will request that content, content being an example here, through the Cloud Management Gateway, step one. Step two, the Cloud Management Gateway is going to forward that request to the management point that's inside the network. Well, that management point also is the Cloud Management Gateway connection point, right? So uh, content lookup happens because the Cloud Management Gateway connection point receives it, forwards it to the management point. Uh, four, the list of available distribution points is returned. Five, the management point returns the list of distribution points, again, through the Cloud Management Gateway connection point. And then finally, uh, clients evaluate the list of distribution points, pick which one they need. Uh, if the only one available to them is the Cloud Distribution Point, then we will go to the Cloud Distribution Point, the client will, to retrieve the content. Right? And then 
this graphic that is actually taken from the documentation, the official documentation that again shows how all of this fits together. Here we have uh, the in, inside the network or the on-prem, if you will, uh, infrastructure. We have our management point. We have our service connection point, software update point, cloud management gateway uh, connection point. Here we have our roaming laptop cloud management gateway distribution point. So the roaming laptop will be communicating through the cloud management gateway. That's connected with the cloud management gateway connection point. Uh, we do have our service connection point just connected in general uh, to Azure and, and so forth. Right? So just another view uh, of how, uh, how things fit together. And we've made it. So we are wrapping up with a few tips and tricks and we'll be done. So in terms of troubleshooting, just a reminder, I've shown you some of these things already. So for certificates, uh, there is one that is needed in all environments. That's the Cloud Management Gateway Authentication uh, Certificate, the, the cert that's actually used when you create the Cloud Management Gateway. We have the Trusted Root Certificate. Now, this certificate is going to validate the trusted relationship to on-prem or third-party certificate authorities. Uh, that, that may be in play. So this actually is required, but if you're using a third-party certificate authority, it's going to be present on your machine by default uh, in most circumstances, right? And if you're using your own certificate authority, then you need to make sure you distribute this trusted root cert uh, to your client. It likely is already there if you're using that on-prem certificate authority or that uh, organizational certificate authority uh, for other purposes, likely your clients already have that cert, but uh, just check that box. And then finally, the client authentication certificate. So this cert validates communication between the client and the infrastructure when Azure AD authentication is either not possible uh, or not configured. Right, I showed you in WI, so I won't show you again, you can refer back, but the, uh, the class uh, SMS underscore active MP candidate will actually list all of the cloud management gateways probably just one uh, that are in your environment. So that's located in WMI under root CCM location services. Again, the class is called SMS underscore active NP candidate. We talked about logs. So talked about a few more than this, but a couple of key ones on the server side. CloudNGR.log documents the setup of the cloud management gateway. CCM underscore STS, that is a server side log. It's on the CMG connection point. That's going to talk about uh, authorizing and, and issuing tokens for, uh, for systems that will communicate. On the client side, the ADAL operations log, again, for tokens, we can validate cloud management gateway communication with CCM messaging and the policy agent log. And then finally, on the Azure virtual machine, so this one's an interesting one, right? I showed you how you can enable RDP connections to the Azure VM, and I showed you this only so you can get into that VM in some cases and learn what's actually configured. Do not configure the VM directly. There's absolutely no reason uh, to do that uh, at all, right? So RDP, yes, you can set it up. Don't change anything in that VM configuration directly because uh, we changed that and, and you can manage everything you need to from the Configuration Manager console. Okay, and so uh, tips and tricks as we, as we get through this last one, right? So I mentioned multiple cloud management gateways are possible. So I want to revisit that for a minute. Why would you want multiple cloud management gateways, right? They're possible. They're likely not, not necessary. Two thoughts that I had, maybe more, right? If you have an existing cloud management gateway configured using the classic deployment model and you need to migrate to a cloud management gateway in the ARM deployment model, you can set up that second ARM deployment model and then switch clients over to it and then deprecate or, or get rid of the classic deployment model. That's one reason. Right? Failover, having a second one, maybe a failover situation in the event one cloud management gateway uh, is disabled or accidentally deleted in Azure or something you know, like that. Right? Uh, clients to cloud management gateway communication, however you set it up, is not regionally aware, so be aware of that. Right? And sometimes whenever you talk about this topic, the question comes up, hey, is it possible if I have multiple cloud management gateways to hard code the clients to go to a specific one? Well, if you look through the console, you're not going to find a way to do it. It is actually possible to do it. Discussing it is beyond the scope of this, uh, of this video, 
Uh, just in, in some very corner scenarios, you might need to do that. But again, uh, discussing that is, is not something I'm going to go through here. Cost control, since Azure is a cloud service and there is a cost associated, uh, that's a, an area of interest to most customers. So there are a few areas. Client settings is one. I showed you that. Uh, your ability to temporarily stop the cloud management gateway service uh, in, in the portal, right? The uh, config manager console. We have the alerting thresholds that you can see, you know, what's, uh, what's happening with your cloud management gateway uh, and so on. In terms of monitoring, so this one is one that I want to pull back in uh, my config manager site for. So in terms of monitoring, there's a couple of ways to do that. So uh, back on administration, go to my cloud management gateway, right? And so I can see uh, my connection points. I can see the uh, number of connections. I can see my endpoints and you know, kind of see what my uh, total requests and so forth are uh, for that. So I can definitely see my traffic by just looking at the cloud management gateway uh, and so forth. I also, uh, while I'm in this pane, have the ability to launch the connection analyzer, which is really nice. So to do that, I need to uh, sign in, or I can use my client certificate, but I'm just going to sign in. So I'm going to have to sign in to my corporate, uh, corporate tenant. So I'm going to pause the video while I do that, and I'll be right back. Actually, sorry, I didn't need to sign in with Microsoft. I needed to sign in with my, uh, my other tenant, so I did that. I'm going to start the uh, analyzer, and off we go. It's just going to check uh, a number of different things, make sure that our communication with the Cloud Management Gateway is working, and it is, uh, and so forth. Now, in the last uh, thing that we can do under monitoring is look at our Cloud Management Gateway dashboard. So that's under Cloud Management. There's actually a few things here, a uh, nice set of dashboards, uh, to look for. If you look down a little bit, you'll see one specific to the cloud, a couple specific to the cloud management gateway. It'll show you the number of ad identities that have communicated with the CMG for the last two weeks, and then the traffic in the last 30 days. So you can kind of see who's using it and how much, any clients that are currently online, uh, and, and what they're doing, and, and so forth. Right. So a little... Uh, well, I'll say little, nice dashboard information so you can actually drill in and see and uh, monitor over time what's actually happening uh, with your environment. Okay, now miscellaneous, uh, just a few items that don't really fit uh, anywhere else that I wanted to chat about for a minute. So when you're creating a cloud management gateway, you have an option to decide to either create a new resource group or use an existing one. Right. If you choose to use an existing one, then just make sure that whenever you choose what region that you're going to use, that it matches whatever has already been configured for that resource group. Right. If you don't, that'll cause an error. Also, uh, when you create your cloud management gateway, monitor your cloudmgr.log. It'll show you any problems that happen as a result. Uh, in some cases, you might see that a given provider for Azure, and we call it Azure Resource Provider, is actually not registered. Uh, the one that we need in, in our documentation is the Microsoft.Classic Compute Azure Resource Provider. That has to be registered. Uh, if it's not, then deploying the cloud management gateway could fail. You might actually see a couple of more, depending on the subscription that you have and how it's set up and so forth, that you might need to register. If you need to register some providers, then it's really pretty easy to do that. Just select your subscription, select resource providers, and then register whichever ones that you need to, uh, to get things done, right? And that's it, right? So we have, thank you for staying with me on the journey. I know it took a little bit of time to get here, but uh, hopefully well worth the time. And uh, we will wrap this session here, and we will see you next time.